Oliver, J. Carter, and W. Parrish, and others were not justified of the Lord, either in their criticisms upon the doings of the prophet or in their becoming a law unto themselves, through which they lost the light of their callings and were left in darkness. And he's echoing Brigham Young's idea that that was the uh, cause of Oliver's downfall. But it really doesn't fit in the, uh, in the record very well. Then there's a letter that Oliver wrote in 1846. Let me quote that. It was to uh, Daniel and Phoebe Jackson. Uh, Phoebe Jackson was Oliver's sister. July 24th, 1846. This was before Oliver came back into the church. He doesn't actually mention plural marriage, but he gives some pretty strong hints. Um, they were in, a, they had apparently written a letter to him talking about uh, certain people practicing plural marriage in Nauvoo. And this is how Oliver responded. Now, Brother Daniel and Sister Phoebe, what will you do? Has Sister Phoebe written us the truth, and if so, will you venture with your little ones into the toil and fatigue of a long journey, and that for the sake of finding a resting place when you know of miseries of such magnitude as have, as will, as must rend asunder the tenderest and holiest ties of domestic life? I can hardly think it possible that you have written us the truth that though there may be individuals who are guilty of the iniquities spoken of, yet no such practice can be preached or adhered to as a public doctrine. Such may do for the followers of Muhammad. It may have done some thousands of years ago, but no people professing to be governed by the pure and holy principles of the Lord Jesus can hold up their heads before the world at this distance of time and be guilty of such folly, such wrong such abomination. It will blast like a mildew their fairest prospects and lay the axe at the root of their future happiness. Pretty strong uh, statement against plural marriage. So I'm really undecided at this time if, if Oliver practiced plural marriage. Uh, certainly the uh, statements from Brigham and Benjamin Johnson indicate that. and. Uh, Several others, like Joseph F. Smith, also made that claim, apparently uh, based on Brigham Young's comments. But Oliver's comments, uh, to me, indicate that uh, he didn't. So, it's a very interesting one. This is all, of course, directly related uh, to the con the next controversy, did Oliver accuse Joseph of adultery? This is a letter that uh, Oliver wrote to Joseph in January of 1838. I learned from Kirtland by the last letters that you have publicly said that when you were here, I confess to you that I had willfully lied about you. This compels me to ask you to correct that statement and give me an explanation, until which you and myself are two. On that very same day, uh, Oliver Cowdery wrote a letter to Warren Cowdery, his older brother, and they're talking about Joseph Smith. He said, uh, when he was here, we had some conversations in which, in every instance, I did not fail to affirm that what I had said was strictly true. A dirty, nasty, filthy affair of his and Fanny Alger's was talked over in which I strictly declared that I had never deviated from the truth of the matter, and as I supposed was admitted by himself. At any rate, just before leaving, he wanted to drop every past thing in which had been a difficulty or difference. He called witnesses to that fact, gave me his hand in their presence, and I might have supposed of an honest man calculated to say nothing of former matters. Never believe that Oliver will disgrace the gray hairs of his father or the high sense of honor in the bosom of his brothers, so much as to acknowledge to Joseph Smith, Jr. that he has lied about him. 
There is something too damning in the thought. My former conduct towards him and that family when they were poor and hated and giving the last cents of my honest earnings to save him from being turned into the streets is so manifest in the memory of those who knew me at the time and my course pursued in defending him before all men with my ability and talent since speak sufficiently in my own heart and proclaim the honest integrity dwelling there too loudly to overlook unnoticed what is past. Oliver's reaction um, uh, to Joseph's marriage to Fanny Alger certainly indicates to me that he wasn't aware that it was a plural marriage. That's another possible reason for, for concluding uh, that he didn't practice plural marriage himself. I suppose you could argue that uh, he was angry that his attempt to practice uh, plural marriage was not approved. And I think that is the argument that's given. Uh, by the way, Todd Compton, uh, he wrote the book called In Sacred Loneliness about uh, Joseph Smith's plural marriages. He believes that uh, Oliver Cowdery did not practice plural marriage at that time or at any time. Another claim that is made is that Oliver uh, renounced the church and joined the Methodist Church. And there was a, uh, a man by the name of uh, Charles Keene who lived in Tiffin, Ohio, where Oliver went after he, uh, he was excommunicated from the church. He lived there in the 1840s. And uh, this claim is basically traced to him, a statement he made in 1885. He says, Mr. Cowdery opened a law office in Tiffin and soon effected a partnership with Joel Wilson. In a few years, Mr. Cowdery expressed a desire to associate himself with a Methodist Protestant church of this city. Reverend John Sounder and myself were appointed a committee to wait on Mr. Cowdery and confer with him respecting his connection with Mormonism and the Book of Mormon. We inquired of him if he had any objection to making a public uh, recantation of Mormonism. He replied that he had no objections, that in the first place, oh, he replied that he had objections, that in the first place it could do no good, that he had known several to do so and they always regretted it. In the second place, it would have a tendency to draw public attention, invite criticism, and bring him into contempt. But he said, nevertheless, if the Methodist Church require it, I will submit to it. We did not demand it, but submitted his name to the church, and he was admitted a member thereof. At that time, he arose and addressed the audience present, admitted his heir, and implored forgiveness, and said that he was sorry and ashamed of his connection with Mormonism. He continued his membership while he resided in Tiffin and became superintendent of the Sabbath school and led an exemplary uh, life while he resided with us. Uh, this statement was made um, 40 years after the fact, and it's too bad that uh, we don't have a contemporary record. It'd be very interesting to know exactly what Oliver said. It's, uh, here's another statement uh, by a woman named Adeline Fuller Bernard, who apparently lived in the Cowdery home during the 1840s. She said, I have often heard Mr. Cowdery say that Mormonism was the work of the devil. And she made that statement in 1881. So you really have two statements indicating that Oliver made negative uh, comments about the church. And I think it's possible that he did. In 1838, when he was excommunicated, uh, he felt, first of all, that he had been uh, unjustly cut off from the church. And then, uh, his life and the, the lives of his family were threatened and all of his belongings were thrown out into the street and he, he left along with the Whitmers under uh, very regrettable conditions. And in some of his letters, uh, he refers to the high council who excommunicated him pretty harshly. And I think it's entirely possible that he could have been uh, talking about that, but we really don't know for sure. 
It's interesting to contrast these statements uh, with the statements of two other residents of Tiffin, uh, William Gibson and William Lang. And they, they were both there at the same time that uh, Oliver became associated with the Methodists. And he, uh, he was associated with the Methodists. There's no question about that. 